so this is the Squirmy Alvin. Um, so what this is, is basically a very, very young king salmon. And the eggs that were laid um, this last fall um, are now starting to hatch. And this is kind of what they look like when they, when they come out of the egg. Um, it's just a simple little body with, with a, a yolk sac. Um, and these little alevin will use that yolk sac as kind of a food source. Um, but they live kind of in the gravel and the soft edges in the, in the rivers. And occasionally they'll get dislodged, especially in high water. And they kind of suspend and float downstream almost like a nymph. And um, the trout and steelhead really like them. And this material, this is that squirmy worm material, you can see how much movement this has. Um, and that's a, a good trigger for the fish, but um, it's fun to fish these things because you can fish them either like a nymph or you can kind of swing them um, on the end of your drift, sort of on the soft edges of the river and whatnot. Um, but they can't, really, they can't really swim because they're so small and they're, they're so weak that you can imagine this little thing trying to fight the current of the river. It's just, it's not gonna happen. So these things will just kind of suspend and float down, super, super vulnerable and um, an easy meal for these fish. <clears throat> and they're very bright, you know, they're very brightly colored with that yolk sac at this kind of lavender body. Um, so it's an awesome fly for like late winter, early spring for both trout and steelhead. So um, we show you how to tie one of these things right now. Um, this is tied on a size eight uh, egg hook. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of hook, but um, this Daiichi Boss Steelhead hook is what I've used on this one. It's a pretty nice hook, it's, it's real thin, um, so you get good penetration with it. Um, and it's just a nice hook, but again, you can use any egg hook. Usually like a size 10 or an eight is, is good. Um, so we're gonna start with our hook here, and then our thread that I'm using is a 75 denier um, white gel spun thread. You can use any white thread. Um, the gel spun, I just tend to use a lot because you can't really break it, so. Um, we're gonna start and just thread this up and go all the way down pretty well into the bend. And this thread will sort of give that squirmy material something to stick to. I'll kind of, I'll show you here in a minute, but kind of go deep down into the bend, right about there. That should do it. Um, and then you're gonna hang your thread kind of right in front of the hook point. Um, and then now we're the first thing to do is gonna we're gonna put in that yolk sac, and all that is is just a little small piece of um, McFly foam. And this is the steelhead orange color. I'm sure it doesn't really matter what color you use as long as it's kind of gold or, or orange. Um, and then they, this stuff comes in these these skeins, and then each skein has these strands. And if you pull out one strand. It's a little bit, a little bit thick for a fly this small, so I like to uh, to just thin this out just a little bit. Use like maybe two thirds of it, something about like that. Um, so what we're gonna do for this is we're not really gonna tie like your standard egg, like we're not gonna tie the yarn in and trim it. We're actually gonna make kind of a loop of yarn. So flip this upside down and kind of come in at a, a downward angle and lock that in, making sure it doesn't, you know, spin around the hook. And it should sit right on the bottom, just like that. All right, and then move your thread forward so it's kind of right behind the hook eye. So now what you're gonna do is sort of press into this thing and make like a loop. Like that. Should end up with kind of like a little baggy, baggy shape. Right about there. That should do it. And then you come in with your scissors and get rid of this excess. A couple extra wraps there. That's kind of what you're going for right there. That's the yolk sack. So that's good. 
Um, and then the next material is this uh, squirmy wormy stuff, squirmito. Um, and then this is the violet color. And I like this color, you could probably use pink. Um, but this, this lavender violet color is nice. It, it, if you look at a photo of these things, they do kind of have that, that purpley hue. Um, and I think it just looks kind of fleshy, you know, it looks, looks good. So I always go with this, but I'm sure you could use, like I said, pink, um, clear maybe. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna measure this stuff out and we're actually going to reverse tie this. So we're gonna tie this worm going kind of forward and then we're gonna put glue on the, the hook shank and then fold it over and it's gonna stick. So um, you're gonna measure this out. You want it to extend about twice the length of the, the hook shank. So always use your hook as a template. Um, so that right there ought to do it. So hold it on the top and then make your first wrap pretty tight but not too tight that you slice through it. This stuff, you'll slice through it pretty easily. So, um, But you wanna do it firmly so it doesn't spin around the hook. You wanna keep it on, on that top side of that hook shank. So just do a firm wrap initially and then a couple others to, to help it lock in there and seat it. Okay, that's good. And then you're gonna take the scissors here, kind of pull on this back part, give it a snip, okay. So now, at this point, we're ready for our Loctite super glue. Um, and then this stuff is the, the extra time control. So it doesn't dry as quick as the standard Loctite, which is good and bad. Um, it's really good for eyes on big streamers because it doesn't dry like immediately. Um, but you get the idea. Um, so what we're gonna do here is just put some glue on the top side pretty liberally and then put it sort of down into the bend as well, kind of where a thread ended earlier, just like that. And then pull this worm stuff back. And then I like to kind of draw that yarn up a little bit so everything just kind of meets right in the middle. And then you're gonna to have to hold it there until that glue kind of solidifies. It's kind of the hardest part is getting this stuff aligned properly. Give it, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so. Should, should be good, let's see. Boom. That's kind of our template right there. Um, sometimes that worm stuff will sort of interfere with the hook eye, but you can still get a tippet through there, that's fine. Um, all right, so now we're gonna put our little eyes on and the eyes that I like to use are these, the living eyes, three millimeter. And it doesn't really matter what eyes you've got as long as they're three millimeter. Um, but I do like the living eyes because they're a little bit like flatter than the 3D adhesive eyes. Those, those 3D eyes are, they're very dome shaped and it's good and bad, but I kind of, for a fly this small, um, I like these eyes because they're real streamlined and flat. Um, so to put these on, you just need a little bit more glue. And I like to, you know, tilt the fly horizontally and then just put just a small dot of glue here right on the front. So here we go with eye number one. And then uh, one handy tool is that is a bodkin. It just helps to sort of get that thing position properly right about there see how flat that is so there's our first eye I'm gonna do the same thing to this other side and then the rule with uh, with super glue is less is more you don't need to use a ton of this stuff for it to do its job so just a little bit of glue and then, uh, come on, and then drop that eye in place. Same thing, Bodkin helps to get this thing kind of situated properly. 
and do your best to get these eyes kind of symmetrically matched here. I mean, the fish don't really care, but if you can get it to look right, it helps. So that's looking pretty good right there. You'll notice I haven't cut my thread yet. Um, there's so much glue and stuff in the head that there's, it, it all kind of runs in and um, it'll lock that thread up no problem. So, and then one last thing that I like to do is take some UV resin. Um, this is the thick stuff from Loon. Uh, you could use the thin, you could even use that flow. It's real watery, but any UV stuff you've got, I like to sort of come in on the throat here and just kind of strengthen and solidify the stuff and add a little bit more rigidity to the, the eyes. And then use your light. That's basically it. That's all it is. And then once you get into a rhythm of this thing, you can, it's really not much tying, you know, it's more like glue, glue work. So you can fill a box with this stuff pretty quickly. Um, so once that thing is locked in there, um, now you can go ahead and cut your thread. And you know, whenever you're using this gel spun thread, it never really wants to slice. Um, for, it just doesn't really slice that well. So what I do is I take my scissors and make a little notch like this and kind of put it right up to your fly and just push forward. That's the best way to cut gel spun thread. So there you go, that's the squirmy Alvin. And this thing works wonders on certain days. Um, like I said, you can fish it as a nymph or you can even swing it on the, the end of your drift, but um, there's a lot of these things in the rivers this time of year. And easy meal for a trout. Again, these things can barely swim. They're so small and these tails are so weak that they just, once they get kicked out into that main current, they're just part of the drift and they get picked off really easily. They're super helpless. They can't, they can't do anything. Like once they get kicked into that main flow, it's almost like a death sentence. So um, tie some of these up, let us know what you think and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.